Hey everyone, this video is on the latent heat of state change. Latent heat of state change is the energy required by a substance to transition between its physical states, which include solids, liquid, and gases. When a substance is absorbing or releasing energy during this phase change, there is no change in its temperature. This is because when a substance reaches the temperature at which it's about to melt or evaporate, the additional amount of heat, instead of being transformed into the kinetic energy of the molecules in the substance, it's used to overcome the attractive forces between the molecules. This is necessary for the substance to transition between different states of matter. The energy required to transition between solids and liquids is known as the latent heat of melting or fusion. And the energy involved in the transition between liquids and gases is known as the latent heat of vaporization. This diagram shows very nicely the relationship between the temperature of a substance versus the amount of energy that's put into it. Starting with solids, as we put in more energy, the temperature of the solid increases. When it reaches the melting point of the substance, additional amount of energy that's put in will be used to transition from the solid state into a liquid state. During this transition, notice how the temperature of the substance remains unchanged. At point C, once all of the substance have been converted into liquid state, further energy input will result in a further increase in its temperature until it gets to point D, where this is the boiling point of the substance, the temperature at which it would begin to transition from liquid into a gaseous state. At this point onwards, further energy input is used to transition the substance from liquid into gaseous state. And again, there is no change in temperature. Once all of the liquid substances have been converted to gaseous form, further energy input will then result in further temperature increase in the gaseous state. The amount of energy that's required to transition between solid and liquid state is known as the latent heat of fusion or melting, and the energy involved to transition between the liquid and gaseous state is known as the latent heat of vaporization. Both these types of latent heat of state change is specific to a substance. For example, this value may be different for water compared to a metal. Similar to changing the temperature of a substance, the amount of energy that's required to transition between different states of matter also depends on the mass of the substance. Increasing the amount of heat is required for a greater mass of the substance. This relationship can be easily summarized in the equation Q for heat equals to the mass of the substance multiplied by the latent heat. The latent heat here could be either the latent heat of melting or the latent heat of vaporization. Now for water, these two values are 334 and 2260 kilojoules per kilogram. This means we need exactly 334 kilojoules of energy to transition one kilogram of ice into liquid water. The energy required to convert liquid water into steam, which is gaseous state of water, is much higher. It's 2260 kilojoules for every one kilogram of water. Now, notice how energy input is required if we want to go from solid into liquid state or from liquid into gaseous state. If we want to convert the substance in the reverse direction, that is from gaseous into liquid state or from liquid into solid state, the same amount of energy or latent heat is released in these transitions. Let's go through some examples. Suppose you have 100 grams of ice at 0 degrees Celsius and we want to melt it. The latent heat of fusion or melting is 334,000 joules per kilo. To find the total energy that's required to facilitate this state change, we simply multiply the mass in kilograms by the latent heat. This will give us 33,400 joules of energy. Again, even though the mass was initially provided in grams, we must use kilograms because the latent heat is provided in per kilogram. Imagine you have 200 grams or 0.2 kilograms of water at 100 degrees Celsius. The latent heat of vaporization for water is 2.26 million joules per kilogram of water. So again, the energy required to vaporize this amount of water is given by the mass in kilograms multiplied by the latent heat of vaporization. This gives a value of 452,000 joules. How much heat energy must be transferred to 500 gram sample of water at 25 degrees Celsius for it to completely boil at 100 degrees Celsius? So boiling here refers to the transition of liquid state into a gaseous state for water. Now we're given the specific capacity of water, 
which is 4180 joules per kilogram water per Kelvin of temperature that we want to change it by. We are also given the latent heat of vaporization, which is 2060. Notice how this is in kilojoules per kilogram, not joules. Now, in this question, there's two parts to consider. The heat energy that we want to calculate is required to achieve two things. The heat energy is first needed to, to increase the temperature from 25 degrees to 100 degrees Celsius. Once the water reaches 100 degrees Celsius, then it can undergo the latent heat of state change, go from liquid into gas. So therefore, we should calculate the energy required for each process separately. The energy required to raise the temperature of water is given by the equation Qc delta T. The mass of water is 0.5 kilograms, and the specific heat capacity of water is 4180 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. And the temperature change here is 100 degrees minus 25 degrees. In this equation, it is suitable to use the change in temperature in degrees Celsius as the value for the change in temperature is the same for units of degrees Celsius and Kelvins. This gives a heat energy of 156,750 joules. We also need to consider the amount of heat required to vaporize the water sample, which is given by ML. M here is mass of the water, which is 0.5, and L here is the latent heat of vaporization, which is 2260 kilojoules per kilogram. So this gives a value of 1130 kilojoules. Keep in mind that the latent heat is given in kilojoules per kilogram, so the final answer for energy required is in kilojoules as well. Now, if we want to find the total energy, we must add the two values together. So the total energy is equal to the energy for raising the temperature of water in joules plus the energy required to change the state into gases. So we need to multiply this number by 1000 to convert it into joules. And this gives an answer of 1.29 times 10 to the power 6 joules. This concludes the video on latent heat of state change. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.